Hey everyone, what is happening? Uh, this is Mr. Waterman and this is our first video for Chem 11. Um, today we're going to be naming and writing formulas for ionic and covalent compounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on what we learned in Science 10. Um, first, a little bit of review. Remember that when we look at the periodic table and you have one right in front of you, the first letter of every symbol is a capital, right? We can see that with lithium over here. And then the that's the first letter of every symbol is always uppercase and the second letter is always lowercase. Now on the left hand side of our periodic table we've got the metals and those kind of go here's our step by step and on the right hand side we have our non-metals and what you'll remember about our metals is that they're positive ions and that when that means that they want to gain electrons to become stable. All right. Another word for positive ion is a cation. Now nonmetals, they have a negative charge. And what they want is to give away electrons so that they become stable, so that the protons and the electrons equal each other, so they balance each other out. And another word for a negative ion is an anion. So ionic compounds consist of a metal and a nonmetal. Covalent compounds consist only of a nonmetal and another nonmetal. All right. So we have a few terms to remember. And monatomic, we know that we've got mono right here, and that means one. So this consists of one element. So something like um, neon, helium, a lithium ion, or even a chlorine ion. They only have one element in them. Next, we have a diatomic, which consists of two elements. And so this can be a compound made of two atoms. All right, so we've got H2 is an example. They don't necessarily have to be different. And then we've got O2, and then we've got IBr, so iodine bromide. Now, what you should remember about Science 10 is we've got these special seven all right, and these are called Hofbrinkel, and they consist of hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, and chlorine. And all of these elements combine with themselves to form diatomic particles. All right, and so for example, we've got an H, and we've got one H with an electron out there, and an H with an electron out there. And what they do is they come together to share that electron so that their valence shell is full. That's something you have to be careful of is the Hofbrinkel. Next we've got triatomic. These are compounds consisting of three atoms. So we've got O3. They're not that common. This is ozone. And then we've got NO2. So we've got one nitrogen and two oxygens. Next we have polyatomic ions. Now remember we've got a little song, Poly Pocket. Um, because she had a lot of pockets, and what poly means is many. So we've got many over here. So many atoms. Um, these are compounds consisting of more than three atoms, and these can all be found at the back of your on the back of your periodic table. And so these are all polyatomic ions, and you'll notice that we've got a positive one on, on our left, which is ammonium, and all the ones on the right hand side are negative polyatomic ions. These are compounds that act like an ion, so they act like they have a charge. We've got our prefixes on the right and a couple examples of acids. Next, we're going to go on to writing ionic formulas. We have to remember that an ionic compound is a metal plus a non-metal. So a metal plus a non-metal, and these are compounds that are made up of ions. So they have different number of electrons and protons. That's why they're ions. And we want to, them to be neutral or balanced. So the first thing we need to do when we are given a name is we need to find the symbols. All right, so we've got NaCl. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the charges for these. We're going to look on a periodic table. We've got a plus and a minus. Then we're going to balance these charges and we're going to swap and drop. And what this does is this balances out our charges so that we know that what the ratio is. So we're going to take our negative down there and a positive down there and we get NaCl. This gives us a one to one ratio. Next we've got lithium oxide. So what we have is we've got Li, we've got our symbols, and we've got oxygen. And we go on periodic table of elements and finds out we have a negative 2 and a positive 1. 
So what that says is we need two lithiums to balance out that negative 2. So we're going to swap and drop, and we get Li2O. So that means we've got a 2 to 1 ratio, and therefore it's balanced. Next we've got potassium, which is K, and sulfate, which is SO4 2 minus. And we've got a plus there. So we've got our symbols, and we've got our charges. Now we're going to swap and drop to balance. And we get K2SO4. So we need two Ks to balance out one SO4 ion. I'd like you to try the next two, please. So pause it and try those two. MGF2, and we get Al2Se3. Now what that says is we need an Al3+, plus, an Al3+, plus, and we need three selenides to balance those out. You'll notice that these equal 6 and this equals 6. So negative 6 and positive 6 equal 0. Next, we'll move right along to our polyatomic ions. And we jumped onto this a little bit quickly. And we looked at uh, the polyatomic ions. They're found on the back side of the periodic table. And they have a different ending. Sometimes they end with 8, it, or us. And so our first one is going to be barium nitrate. Mm -hmm. And we get Ba, so we find our symbol. And nitrate, if you look at the if you look at the back of the periodic table elements, you get NO3 minus, and we have a 2 plus with barium. We swap and drop, and we get Ba NO3. And we have to put brackets around there because that says that we need two NO3 polyatomic ions to balance out one barium. I'd like you to try calcium hydroxide, please. And now let's go to zinc phosphate. So zinc phosphate is zinc 2 plus, and then phosphate is PO4 3 minus. We're going to swap and drop these bad boys. And we're going to get zinc 3 PO4 to the 2. So we need three zincs to balance out two PO4s. Next, we've got our last one here, ammonium sulfide. So ammonia, ammonium sulfide is NH4. And ammonium is a polyatomic ion, and it's a positive ion. And then we've got sulfide, which is just S to the 2 minus. We swap and drop, and we get NH4 to the 2. So that means we need two of them for every S ion. Now, we've gone through naming ionic compounds and with polyatomic ions. Now, sometimes there's metals that have multiple charges. Now, multiple charges mean that they're multivalent metals. So let's just take a look, and you'll notice right here, let's look at manganese. You'll notice that it's got a 2 plus, a 3 plus, and a 4 plus. And what you can see is that there's these are different versions. And we need to notice, we need to tell people that when we're writing equations. So we need to use Roman numerals. And so we've got one. So let's check this out. We've got iron three oxide. And if we look back at our periodic table of elements, iron has Fe three plus or two plus. So we're going to have Fe three plus and O two minus. We're going to swap and drop these. And we get Fe. 2O3. Next, we've got chromium carbonate. And so we've got, this is a tricky one. So we've got Cr4 plus, and carbonate is CO3 2 minus. Now, this is really tricky. What you're going to do is you're going to swap and drop Cr2 CO3, and we're going to put that in brackets because we have a subscript out there. When our subscripts have a common denominator, we have to reduce them. So what we're going to get is we're going to get CrCO3 to the 2. So basically we divide that by 2, divide that by 2, we get 1 and 2 right there. I'd like you to try mercury chloride, mercury 1 chloride on your own please. We're going to get lots of practice at this stuff in class. Next we've got naming ionic formulas. So we started with a formula, we, we started with a name first and now we're going backwards to get to the name. 
So check to see if there's more than one charge for the metal. If there is, then we're going to use Roman numerals. And then we're going to change the ending to ide for the final for the uh, non-metal. And then we're going to leave the ending for polyatomic ions the same. Magnesium bromide. So we've got we look up for Mg. So we've got magnesium bromide. And it would have been bromine, but we had to change the end of that final element. Next, we've got FeSO4. So what I do there, when, when I look at a metal that has more than one charge, we look for SO4. And SO4, we've got Fe, and then SO4, 2 minus. And what we need to do then is Fe can either be a plus 3 or a plus 2. If it's a plus 3, we won't get FeSO4. But if it's a plus 2, those cancel out and we get FeSO4. So our name is going to be iron 2 sulfate. All right, I'd like you to try the rest of them on your own. And finally, we have hydrates. Now, hydrates are pretty cool. They're ionic compounds with water molecules attached to them. Now, if you do a little research on hydrates, um, hydrates are solids that form due to the evaporation of aqueous solution. So aqueous means something's dissolved in there. Now it's found in it's found that there's water molecules in a solid structure. They're kind of trapped in there. And these solids release the water when they're heated up. So examples of this would be clay. Clay has water in them, they're hydrates. And then we also have uh, crystals, which are which is pretty crazy. If you want you, I, I encourage you to go check those out on the internet. Um, so we use the same prefix system as we do with um, covalent compounds and so what we do is we name the ionic compound just how it normally would be named and then we add a little bit with the water molecules there so we've got copper and then we've got to look at the number of hydrogen um, the number of waters that we have and then we're going to name it dihydrate so that's all we do so we've got a regular ionic compound and then because we've got water attached to it, or it's inside the solid structure, or trapped in there, we call it dihydrate. And the di means two. All right, we're going to get a bunch of practice in class. If you have any questions, make sure you write them down at the bottom. And uh, we will see you tomorrow.